Hi guys, welcome to the RC store. My name's Amo. In this video, we're going to be unboxing a Roven LT36DR. Massive box. Let's get into this and see what this is about. It's, from what I know and my understanding, it's similar to an LT45, however, just less spec. I believe it's a 36cc. I don't know what else is different. I've not physically seen it myself. Let's get right into it. Once again, like all roving items that we've got, it comes double boxed. Boom, here we go. Right, what I'll do is get the camera up here and show you what's in the box. And here it is, the LT360DR. So in here, from what I can see, very similar to all the other Rovens we've done. You've got your detail sheets, We've got a control unit not sure which one it is yet like i said they all come with different controllers we have seen the x4 by wfly with majority of them however some have had even better controllers uh, so it'll be interesting to see what this one comes with got your pack and the oil cap and this is the vehicle itself wow that blue is electrifying this is gonna look sick. Let's get it out of the box. What do you guys think? I think it looks amazing. This particular car, unlike the others, came with the wheels already fitted. So we didn't have to literally start bolting wheels on, etc. The wheels already come on the actual car itself. So I'll go through the accessories, what comes with the vehicle, and then we'll move over to the actual vehicle itself. So it comes with an oil can. So you put your two stroke oil on one side over on this side you put your fuel which is the unleaded you get your correct mixture ratios it's all labeled out here so if it's two to one mix you obviously put the right amount there to the right label on this side give it a good shake and pour it out to your tank and your fuel mixture is perfect so this is really handy the interesting part controller the box is a bit mishmashed but hey ho, as long as the contents are okay, that's the main thing. Quick look. The box itself is not as nice as what we've had in some of the other vehicles, like the LT45. So this comes with a FS GT3B by Flysky. So I'm pretty sure um, there is a couple of other vehicles that we've got these controllers for. So in the box itself, you've got your instruction manual. I'm not sure how detailed it is. Just a pretty much generic, generic manual. Tells you what the controller does and the options, etc., on there. You've got an antenna stick there, and you've got your um, plug to do your winding with as well. Ooh, that's interesting. So the actual controller is damaged. Bruh. Like I said, this is completely raw. Just so you guys know, we, we've not opened this actual vehicle before, so it's the first time. And as you can see, the controller's come out damaged out the actual box itself. It's a shame, but we've got plenty of controllers here in stock, so we'll just probably use another one um, from another vehicle. It's a FSGT 3B. They are decent controllers to be fair. It's a shame about that. Nice rubber grip on there. You got your um, throttle, three channel. Yeah, three channel. Your antenna at the top. LCD display and all the controls for it. 
that's that. That's a bit wounding, that is. Not happy with that. Takes your four AA batteries at the bottom. Let's pop that on the side. So you get a pack. In that pack, you have twin coated air filter. P clips, the spare nuts and bolts, and some spare uh, dampener covers that covers on your suspension. Some spare pins and group screws. So, a Fatalba lead to a Tamiya lead. got a spark plug remover, a screwdriver, some allen keys and there you've got your spanner and a wheel wrench in there as well. Spare allen bolts, a USB to a Tamiya lead charger. So the vehicles from what we've seen so far they do come with a battery to power your electronics, to power your uh, receiver and servos. A slip from the RC store. This basically tells you all your do's and don'ts, all your procedures that you need to take, any cautions uh, before you start your vehicle, uh, which is quite handy. And it comes with a coloured manual. So these manuals are quite detailed, so I'll just go through and show you a couple of the pages. So here's an exploded diagram of a chassis. So these give you exploded diagrams and each item has part numbers. So if you do need replacement parts, you physically look at the part you're looking for, look at the part number, Google it, or jump on the site and basically you can order the parts. So that makes things really easy for you. So they are quite detailed to be fair. We've got some decals. The decals you get are some branding decals just here. So you can choose whether you want to put these on the vehicle or not. And you've got decals for your lights, front grille, back lights, front lights, spotlights, and your mirrors. And then you've got the vehicle itself. Looking at it, it looks stunning. I ain't gonna lie, the blue really pops on this. And from what I can see from my angle, there's some blue anodized parts, which is a bit different to some of the other models that we've opened. In terms of the wheels, they've got blue bead locks going across them, as you can probably just catch it there. And these tires, they seem completely different to what we've had before. They're more like a rock crawler type of tire uh, along with i'd say the multi-terrain so you could probably use them on grass it's look like they'd be decent on grass concrete tarmac uh, and so forth and they're like knobbly sort of tires uh, we will get a little close up of the tires moving forwards i'm just going to turn the vehicle around just to give you guys a view of the front the back and so forth so let's get the back in first that's the rear of the vehicle one thing I do love about these is they've got these nice rubber mud guards I think that's really cool gives it a nice touch plastic roll cage plastic rear bumper the roll cage follows through you might be able to get the shocks there that are anodized get the front in So as you can see on the front end of the vehicle, you got your front bumper, four spotlights. There are some decals on the decal sheet for these where you can put the spotlights, uh, stickers on there to imitate um, the lights. You might be able to catch the tires from this angle, but I will do a close up in a second. Uh, so there are your tires there. Right. 
let's get this shell off and have a look inside the vehicle itself. To get the shell off, it's four pins, just like the other ones. Um, if you ain't seen the other ones, you can check out our links. You'll see them at the end of the screen. Um, once the video is finished, towards the end screen, there'll be a couple of links. You can also check out other videos there uh, of other vehicles we reviewed. There's some bashing videos. There's a mixture of different, different cars, etc. So feel free to check that out. It may interest you. All right, so you've got two split pins on the back, just there. And you've got two at the bottom here. So that's one. Get the other one out. And the way these bodies lift off, you can take the panels off individually if you want to. As you can see here, there's some screws and washers. You've got four on the top, four on the body, some across the side here and over on the back panels. The way this work is you take these off with Allen screws. Once they're removed, this section comes off. Same with the front and then your two rear sides. They are bolted on the actual plastic roll cage. The maneuver I just showed you is basically removing the whole roll cage with the body. So like I said, two pins at the back, two pins at the front. You start by lifting the front ones out, which we have there. Wiggle the back ones up. Bear with me. And then you just pull it forward once you've got the front up. What you can see here, these little prongs that stick out, they've got a locator hole on the rear bumper. They locate in, so they stop the actual body lifting up and down. And then you've got your split pins that go in. So that's your little secret. Let me just pop this down on the side. This is nice. First thing that strikes out to me is the anodized blue on the shocks and the chrome exhaust. Straight away, uh, them items stand out straight away. So I think the best thing for me to do right now is get that camera, get you guys up and close and let you see all the components and make some comments, let me know what you think. And I'll tell you what stands out completely different from other vehicles. And maybe in another video, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of this and maybe an LT45. Um, so people do actually get to see the main difference and why the price difference is there on the two cars. So guys, here's a close up of the actual tires. Um, quite a thick grip to be fair. They're quite nice. Um, I'm assuming these can do all terrain. They do look like they can handle mud. They could handle grass, definitely. Uh, gravel, tarmac so forth so i guess these are good all around tire um the width on the tires i've not checked that yet i'll just have a quick look gives you guys an indication so they are 180 by 70 tire they do have like i said the blue bead locks running across them uh, which is a nice touch moving slightly further in you've got your suspension which is pretty much same as couple of the other models that we've reviewed. Uh, aluminium shocks, adjustable dampeners. You've got metal shock towers made out of billet and they've got adjustable points so you can move these into higher and lower points. So you've got three different settings there. You do have a rubber boot cover on the actual dampener there to stop any ingress and dirt getting in there and wearing out the seals, which is good. In terms of suspension itself, that's really nice that is feels like it can handle a bit so we've got plastic lower wishbone you got some solid drive shafts this is a four-wheel drive vehicle by the way you got adjustable toe there 
and your camber is adjustable as well. You do have an anti-roll bar, which is just there. You can see it there, the metal bar. Then moving forward, you've got a diff in the diff case. And then you've got your servo saver just there, just underneath. This brace here is made out of aluminium. This brace here is plastic. And then you have a plastic brace that goes from there to the actual aluminium chassis, which is this one here. Here you have your fuel tank. The fuel tank itself doesn't have a, a breather pot there. It has your yellow fuel line, which goes and feeds the carburetor, and you've got your return line. It doesn't have the breather hose that comes out of here. On some of the other vehicles, they come with breather hoses. This is a, a more of a basic vehicle compared to them. So this one here has a hole in the, breather, uh, in the actual filler cap. So there's your breather to release gases in that rubber bunk and over at the top there. If any of you guys don't know why you have these breather holes, basically fuel can make a lot of gases here. And once some gases build up, it can cut your engine out. So them gases need to be released. Hence you have your breather. You've got some heavy duty digital servo for your steering, which has got a metal horn on it. It is all adjustable with the links there as well, which makes it nice and easy. Instead of messing around with the Allen bolt and shifting things, you can actually use that if you wanted to. You've got a rubber cover on your on and off switch. That obviously prevents any ingress and dirt getting in there or water. You've got a split pin here. So if we open this split pin, open that split pin there, and um, this is your receiver box this open and show you what you get in here so you got your fly sky uh, receiver just hidden in there and your digital antenna nice box to be fair all tucked away preventing any dirt etc getting in there pop that back on Moving over here, you got yourself another digital servo with a aluminum horn. You do have a center diff and you do have two disc brakes, one on either side. As you can see, it's connected to the actual horns of a servo and you've got your discs on either side. One thing I've also noticed is where you got your spur gears and your center diff gear here, it's actually covered with a plastic guard which is a quite a nice touch to be fair. Over on this side, you've got your throttle and the servo. The side trays are plastic that attach to the chassis. And over here, you have your battery compartment and it's on a large split pin, which is nice and easy. It just makes things easier rather than having to use two split pins, etc. You've got one nice and empty long one. So if I pop that open, you've got a Tamiya style charger, sorry, Tamiya style connector on your battery. And it's got a six volt. 4,500 milliamp but NICAM battery in there. That'll be for all your electronics. Let's get this close back up. So to close it, you just got tabs over on the back side and over the front, you just need to press it and line these holes up. Just bear with me, it's a bit difficult because I can't see the holes from the rear end of the vehicle. So this is the 36cc engine. 
It looks smaller than the 45, which is a given. However, it's a lot larger than the 23 cc engines you see out there, etc. This vehicle is compatible parts with a lossy 5T. So you can change a lot of bits on here uh, to make it look like a lossy or use some of the lossy upgraded parts. One thing I will say, I thought the shocks looked like lossy shocks. Obviously the lossy ones are imprinted with lossy over the top of them. These ones ain't. You got your tuned exhaust pipe, as you can see, and it's got a, a silicon joiner just there. Another thing that I've noticed, there's a lot of brackets to this exhaust system. So that's a bit different. I'm guessing it's the way they've rooted it. <coughs> Excuse me. You got your center prop shaft that goes from your diff, runs all the way down to a rear diff. And then on the rear diff, you've got a plastic brace that runs from the rear diff casing over to the aluminium chassis at the bottom, which is this one here. And over on the back, you've got your plastic wishbones. You've got your aluminium uh, shocks, as explained, and your camber is completely uh, adjustable. And you do have an anti-roll bar just there as well. Aluminium shock towers that are completely adjustable. And you've got three different settings where you can adjust the height, ride height. You've got plastic body mount posts here. They seem quite strong and sturdy. Plastic front bumper, sorry, back bumper. The front bumper's on the other side. What I'll do, I'll turn the vehicle around so you can see it from the rear end. And then I'll turn it over to the other side so you can see a bit more of the engine. that's the rear end of it it's not a bad looking machine to be fair get it across there so over on this side you got your pull start You've got your emergency cutout, your high and low carb settings, your idle screw, which is that one there, your primer bulb on top of the carb, your dual air filter, and they do give you a spare one. You've got your choke, which is just there. Once again, the side guards are plastic going into an aluminium chassis. Let's have a look underneath this. You see the plastic guards where it mounts on. Right, we'll switch back over to the other camera and get the body back on. And there it is guys, the LT360DR. It's complete now, put the body back on. It's a nice looking machine, to be fair. A little disappointed with the controller. I will get on the phone to Rovin and get that sorted. Their customer service is really good. So I've got no worries there. These things happen um, in post your packaging. So don't, don't be put off by that. It's just one of those things. It's just happened to us. It is what it is but the actual vehicle itself what did you guys think did you notice anything different on it you think it's a decent looking machine how can it be improved what would you like us to do with this machine we can send it to the moon we can ride, take it on a bike pump track take it on some grass fields comment comment in the sections below and let us know and we're more than happy to do it catch us in the next video uh, and if you did like this content guys don't forget like share and subscribe and if you want to keep up to date with all our content because we're releasing a lot of content 
all the time, smash that notification button. See you in the next one.